Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Friday morning, Erev Shabbos Kodesh, Parsha Vayishlach. Um, pretty exciting Parsha. Wanted to make sure that I did this. You know, Shabbos is early these days. And so I wanted to make sure before I uh, head outside or do some exercise, make sure um, we do this Dvar Torah before, uh, before the day gets away from us. It's a you know, quick day, as you all know. So a few weeks ago, I thought the parsh is really dealing with food, parsh toldos. Um, I think this week deals a lot with money. Um, we see very interesting, two interesting stories, at least two, that deal with money. Uh, the first has to do with uh, the presents that Yaga gives to Esau. And the other is when Yaakov travels back for Pach and Katanim. So we know that Yaakov is by himself, Levado, and the Ace of, of the Malach of Ace of come. So what's the whole story with Pach and Katanim? And we know that this Gemara and Chulin, that was Pach and Katanim, some, you can't, Tzadikim Chavalem, Bimonim, Yoter, Bigufam. Tzadikim love money more than their bodies. And we know that it's the Gulf of Gemara, we say, Chomo Decha. Some people like their nefesh, some people like their guf. Some people like their money more than their guf. So it's, it's, it's just bizarre that what does that even mean? A tzaddik loves money more than they love themselves? If anything, that's that's what we don't want. We, we make fun of those people. The guy, he's chasing the money so much. Look at his health. He's sacrificing all these other things in his life for money. We look down at those people. So why, why is it tzaddik? Why is this a shvach for, for Yaakov? And the Gemara says, because Sadik doesn't take from Gezo. And the pre is, well, that's a mitzvah that that's even B'nai Noach have to keep. You can't steal. <laughs> so what's the shvach of Yaakov and Sadikim that, oh, they don't steal? So the pre brings down the, um, the story, really, with Abraham, with Sodom. We know that Abraham turns down the offer. Abraham goes to battle with he goes with Eliezer or 318 men. They go to battle against the four kings and they free all these people, the captives and the Mel Sodom. And Avram turns down the offer of all this stuff, even though rightfully, and the question is why is he turn it down? Theoretically, if you save the stuff from someone who is, you know, Mayayish something, it's really yours. And even more, the king gives it to him. So why is Abraham not willing to take it? So Abraham was not sure that what he did, um, not that it, it was gazelle, but it wasn't done the proper way. The money was obtained, maybe it wasn't from the Yad Hashem, maybe it wasn't from quote unquote, Osh la Torah, Das Torah. It was in a battle. We know that the, the measure said, this is the first war in the world, the four kings against the five kings. They were killers. So Adam thought, you know what? I risked my life to save Lot. Maybe I shouldn't even done that. To, to risk my life for a Russia, sorry Lot, but Rizal calls you Russia. To risk my life for a Russia, maybe I shouldn't have done that. So Abram, even though Hashem makes a miracle, Hashem saves him and they free the people, Abram still wasn't sure if that was the right thing to do. So back, fast forward to, to Yaakov. Yaakov, was in the same position. Yaakov did not know that this was entirely, um, that he knew that what even Pach and Katanim came from Hashem. And this is a, is a high level, think about it. And the Pritzadik says, out of all, all the, of us were wealthy, Abraham, Yitzchak, even the fertilizer of Yitzchak was worth more than the gold of Avimelech. There of us were, were wealthy, Yaakov, 600,000 animals, but Yaakov had one thing Pritzalek says over the other two Avos, is that Yaakov worked for his money. <laughs> um, he says that Abram, you don't see him doing any Ishtadlis. Yitzchak, he had fields, he had land, there was miracles, but the Torah spends a lot of time, last week's parish, talking about how much effort and how much uh, Chachma that Yaakov did to acquire his wealth. And the priest says, if one of the Avos would have said, you know what, 
this is really from me, it would have been Yaakov. Avram definitely could look in the mirror and say, this is from Hashem. I didn't do much. I'm wealthy. It's from God. Yitzchak, the same thing. But Yaakov is the only one of the Avos who really worked so hard, 20 years, to acquire this. And if, if one person could have said, why well, do I have to go travel back by myself, put myself in danger for these little pots and pans? I have more. I have new ones. What's the big deal? It could have been Yaakov. Yaakov was wealthy. But Yaakov knew that even with his own shtadlus, it's all from Hashem. He had to go travel back for pots and pans. And there's a fine line, you know, uh, between being cheap, you know, helping the environment and thinking Yad Hashem and being frugal. A um, bunch of years ago, I was in Rockaway, New Jersey, not far Rockaway, you know, fancy for Rockaway, Rockaway, New Jersey, and the Chabad rabbi was talking, I think this is Parsha, how you see even a penny on the floor, you pick it up, a nickel. It's from, you know, it's something. Put in the pushka, it's kedusha. So I remember years ago, after I heard that, I was bicycling on the road, and I saw a coin, and I just kept going. And then I'm like, you know what, the rabbi just mentioned you know, I got to go back. So the next day, I did the same route, and I stopped on the side of 38. It was actually two shekel. <laughs> it was two shekel. And I went back to Rockaway. I was on a project in New Jersey. And the rabbi was so impressed that, not that it was two shekel, but someone was listening. <laughs> you know, people, you know, if you're in Hamar, no one's really paying attention to people on their phones. But he was impressed that I was kind of listening. And this kind of is something that is a good conversation to talk about what level, um, you know, think about money and spending money. This is Shalem. You know, one of the things that is Yichan Yako Shalem, he becomes, he's, he's Shalem, and he comes to Shechem. So Shalem, Gufo, Teroso, and Mammon. He was Shalem in his Mammon because even after the presence, the Yaakov gives away, the Medrash says, that he was, he, was, he was nervous. He gives the presence to Esav, the back of his mind, how, how do I give away something at 600,000, Keneged, 600,000 Jews are going to come out. How is it Yaakov's business to give a, a Russia a present? It's from Hashem. Who am I? And when he finds out later that he's back to 600,000, anything he gave away to Yaakov, Esav, he, he has it back, the same number. He, he was showing. He was complete. And this is something I think that's we have to kind of talk about and think about a little bit more as far as how money can make a shilling, what we do with our money. Um, this week's parsha also, they buy uh, Shechem, um, where y y Yosef is buried, and the priest Sadek talks about that money is for the Mishkan, money, Maris Pela. Money is very important. And Hashem gives us money, what to do with it, what to use it. And it's something we're judged on. How do we use our money? And we have to be shilling. Um, I think every person, you know, is having a big house. Is that against Shalem? Is not having a house, having a small apartment and saving them money, doing something else with it? So each person has to make their own cheshbon and nefesh, really what? Going to a restaurant all the time? Going to Florida every few weeks? Everyone has to make a cheshbon and nefesh, exactly what is using the money in Shalem in complete. Maybe something takes away from Torah is not Shalem. If you can learn Torah and do tzedakah, then it makes you Shalem. I'm not sure exactly... How we answer that, each person has to make a kind of cheshman and nefesh. If A, they treat the money that they have as totally men shemayim, and even though I'm working, doing my shtadlis, that I succeed and I have a house and a car and all these things, that's men shemayim. And also showing, we have to know that Hashem gave us money, and we have to make the right decisions. Not to waste money, um, to get stuck in the right places, to think about it a little bit more. And to be careful about it, I'll be frugal. And my friend Rob calls me cheap. Once we went playing tennis, it was 90 something, and I didn't want to put the air conditioning on, you know, waste gasoline. And they... Till this day, the guy looks at me like I'm the cheapest guy in the world. Uh, maybe I am. But there's a certain level as far as being frugal and being cheap, and I'm appreciating that every dollar, every penny, every agurah is from Hashem, and being careful with that. Shabbat shalom.